everyone. So thanks for uh, joining me today. I have a couple items I want to show you guys. They arrived and I've had them kind of sitting by my door. And so a little bit of a haul and I think I'm going to try out one of the items which would be the Crafters Companion Template, li template Library. I think this is the second auto ship. So there was um, the original thing, right? And I had picked up and we'll talk a little about that. And then um, I skipped the second auto ship when it said, oh, you know, you have an order. And I'm like, I haven't placed an order. So when I checked, I was like, oh, it's that auto ship. I meant to cancel it. And so I went and watched the old like um, Google. Excuse like, me. So I went to watch the old YouTube um, video presentation of like the original template library to see if it was something I was interested in. I kind of wasn't. So I'm like, OK, I canceled that. I thought I canceled the whole auto ship program, but I guess I didn't because then this one came, I think, um, while I was in Hawaii, like I didn't notice. I didn't notice it was shipping and I was like, oh well, or I don't know. I, either way, I missed it. So I have it here and actually it has some cute stuff in it, so that's that's fine. And then the next one I think has more like boxes in there, so which is always fun. I mean, you're gonna make these things basically by hand, so um, you know, you wanna take some care that they're all pretty much the same. So when you square it up, you make your box or whatever it is that it looks nice. So, you know, it takes a little, little care. But um, yeah, if any of the items that I have to show you are available, I'll link them in the description box. Those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. Like I said, I think they're auto ship. Two of them are auto ship. Um, one is actually from Tonic. Um, and I think it's actually sold out in the U.S., so uh, I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, or actually, we'll just get right to it, shouldn't we? Yes. I was just going to say, I'm feeling better. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, my voice was just like shot. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I do think it was allergy related, definitely, because it was just that kind of symptom. And I'm uh, feeling better. And there are beautiful flowers all over California, and that's great, but not great for my allergies. Something blooming that doesn't typically bloom. I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened. So uh, I'm doing a lot better. And thanks for, I gave myself a little rest, which is not typical of me. You guys know that love to make videos and um but i was like no i got i got a rest of the voice it's not gonna get better you know oh my gosh guys sorry for the rough edit because i'm sure i was talking about you know what we're going to be looking at but um <laughs> Spellbinders is having their spring clearance sale where like things are like a dollar and literally like some things that were not super released like a long time ago are a dollar. A lot of the large um, dye clubs or large dye clubs, yeah, I don't know, I said that kind of funky, are like five bucks and things like that. So I will link that sale in the description box because this is one of their great sales like they do it in the spring and again like in the fall. And some people like the sales they have like after Christmas, but um, it's definitely one to look at. I was looking at I was like, ooh! So there are quite a few things I'm looking at picking up. Some of the uh, papers from Kathy Holden um, are like three bucks or so. Um, I think usually like six ninety nine or seven ninety nine. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of things to mention, but yeah, definitely uh, something to check out. So I will link that in the description box. I will be shopping that sale myself. Okay, uh, let's get back to uh, opening up Whatever I was doing. Sorry, I don't know where this rough edit edit's going to be at. I'll be right back. Here we go. So hopefully I'll uh, be able to do a uh, swap soon. I've been wanting to do them, but obviously we went out of town and then, you know, kids are home. All these different things and all these different things piling up. And then Matt left after we came back for Hawaii. He had to go out of town for a week. So, like, <laughs> it's been pretty crazy and hectic. And then I was sounding the way I sounded. So I was like, no, I don't want to start a swap now because I know a lot of times people will, you know, back out of a swap because they're not feeling well. And then I really don't want to touch everything and then send it to you, you know, kind of thing. So I definitely don't want to start a swap where I sound that way. Um, so doing great. So hopefully we'll uh, do that very soon. And I'm not sure exactly what it is or what it's going to be, but keep an eye out. Um, okay. So this is the excellent Easter egg box die set. I did order this like literally days before Easter because I thought I was going to order and then I went at, you know, the whole Hawaii thing kind of like was something I just threw together. <laughs> so like we took off and um, I still wanted this. So uh, I ordered it and it came in and of course it missed Easter, but it had sold out in the U.S. site during you know that meantime. So I was able to order from the uh, U.K. site. So this is a tonic um, excellent Easter egg box and I am just in love. I think it is so cute. And again, a lot of times I order these things just to have them. I did not know that there was a bow in this. Oh, I love it. So there's <laughs> a little bow die and there's the base and it has inlays even. How cute is that? So it's going to be a lot of fun ways to play with that. And then of course the Easter egg itself. And I think it's going to be very simple. It's a lot like those other items that I put together um, in the past that have that kind of dome shape to them so this will be really fun oh my gosh how cute okay oh there's the little bow now very cute so i'm happy to have that and then i also received you know i think i also got an anna griffin auto ship didn't i i just put it to the side because it came in 
um, with the Gemini 2 machine. So I was like, oh, the Gemini. So I showed you guys that and I put the Anna Griffin Auto Ship to the side and I don't even know where I put it. So I got to find that um, so we can play. This is the A Diamond Press Apron Construction Tools Stamp Die Auto Ship. So again, continue with the apron. This one looks smaller, doesn't it? Let's see. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to play with this one today, so I'll just take a quick measurement just in case it's available, but I have not seen it yet. So whenever I receive it, it's usually like a month, or maybe even weeks later. Sometimes it'll show up on HSN's site itself. It's, oh, it's four and a quarter, I would say, what it actually cuts by just over four inches. I feel like it's smaller. I probably have an example of one already cut sitting next to me here, but anyway. Um, how cute the little screws and the like um, wrench and little nail. I mean, look at the little like nuts and bolts. Oh my gosh, how adorable. This actually reminds me, I do have the Spellbinders um, set that was put out, I think by Nancy Stamps. Uh, I don't know why I didn't make the connection because I don't know her last name and it was like Nancy McCabe or something. I hope that's right. And then I was like, oh, that's Nancy Stamps <laughs> after it came out. But I do have those to play with also, and I think it's going to be really great, obviously, for Father's Day and other purposes, because they're just adorable. Um, but this one has the stamps and then the dies, where I think Nancy's are more dies to create the things. They might have a stamp set, I'm not 100%, uh, but I do have the dies for like the different tools, so that'll be fun. And I can mix and match here. And look at the little ruler. I love having that, or measuring tape, should I say. It's not so much a ruler. <gasps> Cute. So we have that. And then this is what I'm going to play with today. Hopefully I'll have time. I'm like, oh, I'll make a quick video for you guys. And of course, I choose the thing that takes time to actually, like, trace and all that. But, um, yeah, so when I looked this one up, actually, I just looked it up just to see what was in here. Um, the last time there were a lot of shapes. And I was like, when you see shapes, and like, oh, a shaped card. And it's the shape of, oh, sorry, that was an ugly noise, of, you know, whatever it is that might be a little bit tricky. The way I see that is that means I have to trace that even though we have the templates and I had to cut that out and I was not into that. So like I think the next one might have like a shoe or maybe this one has like a shoe like a high heel. And I mean really you're going to have to do that yourself. Right? So um, not my cup of tea. So not something I um, generally do. But it does say that there are detailed video guides at craftsplan.com co.uk slash template dash library so hopefully if you have these guys you can pull that up somebody asked me if i would register my gemini for the classes or like to try to get into them and i have not so i'm sorry if some people are having trouble with that definitely contact crafters companion i've always had the best luck if i had to contact them not through email but like on their site where it says like contact us that's a good way because you, you generally get a reply real quick just saying that they received your um, comment or your question and then somebody does follow up with you. Uh, whenever I've emailed it just seems like it just, I don't know where it goes, but it's taken the longer amount of time if someone it does respond. So if you have problems with that or you know registering, definitely use the contact us on the Crafters Companion page, okay, like their actual website. Um, so let's check this out. So we have recipe cards, they're a little for some reason um okay so it starts off again i'm going to show this really quickly uh i'll leave it like this because the whole point of this is that you can pop it out and like let's say you just want to look at the card but you can also lay it flat so we have template uh z fold card and a lot of these i already have videos on <laughs> i noticed some of the things that are in here i'm like oh i have a video for that um just making it from scratch anyway so you know that's why that's kind of how i was looking at these things like do i already have i already done this you know Shaped card that's a heart, of course, it's just a gatefold, basically, and you're just doing the thing. Uh, I would probably do this a little bit differently, uh, but there it is, anyway. Um, this one, I have something, I made a few of these exploding kind of cards, super easy. It's just a way of kind of playing with the folds so that it folds in, and then when you open it up, it kind of opens up like this. And I have a couple videos already doing that on your own. Um, you know, trifold shutter cards again. <laughs> I'm almost 100% sure I have a card or a video on something like this. Uh, this might be what I work on today. We will see because I like these kind of cards. Um, we have the shadow box card. Very good. Again, lots of videos on those. Crafts Companion has lots of videos on those. The curvy gatefold. Of course, we like a curvy gatefold. You are going to have to draw that yourself and cut it yourself with scissors. And hopefully you stay on the line so it looks nice, right? And that's the whole thing with templates. I know in my original video, somebody had left me like a novel about, you know, comments about how they didn't care for my video. And the whole thing is I got the template library really because I heard from you guys. You guys were wanting me to get it. And it wasn't really something I'm into. 
And I know that, and I said that, so people already know, hey, this is not my kind of thing, you know? And then they're like, and then of course she chose the hardest uh, project to do, which makes it look, you know, difficult to do, and it's like, I, the reason I chose the hardest one is so that you guys can see that, and then reverse engineer how it'd be easier to just do these lines or whatever, right? So I think people want to see something that might have a little more difficulty because, hey, how do you actually do that, right? Even though you have this sitting in front of you. That's why I chose that, not to make it look hard. Obviously, templates are difficult. I mean, you use them, but you have to cut and fold and do all those things on your own, really, right? So like this one here, you know, you have your butterfly shape. We're going to do what we do. These matte layers are all done by hand. So again, that's why I chose the harder uh, project, not to make it look bad. <laughs> like, And I think I... I had made like a candy shaped gift box or whatever. So I'm like, okay, uh, the reason I did that was on purpose, like literally so I can show you guys how to make some of the harder things when some of the other ones are more straightforward, right? Anyway, half star card, which is fun. It's just several different cards that are kind of put together and they make these little boxes. Um, this one for sure I made a video on this. I had never seen a video done to just make your own cam like shutter card or iris card. And I think I used, um, items from Local King just to dress it up and all that and it is literally exactly this. <laughs> so I don't know but that's pretty funny. I mean you guys remember that and I even show you how to cut the yeah I mean it's exactly this so it's nice to have something to start off with because of course I showed you guys how to do it from scratch but um but you have templates again to trace them. This is literally almost the, even the positioning is exactly what I had done. So there you have that. Secret message handbag. This is very cute. Um, very much like what's in that pop-up of that card, the pop-out card. It's, a, it's just kind of put together in like a little purse that is adorable. So I like that project. I think it'll be really sweet. This one I was debating probably doing this bendy foldy card, but I was like, eh, do we really need to do that one? Um, I mean, we can. <laughs> Another time. It does have like a slot. Oh, that's interesting. So I was wondering how you're going to keep it flat for sending. And I have a feeling that's what you're supposed to do. Take it out and then that little tab pops in. So you can flatten it out, send it, and then the person when they receive it kind of assembles it a little bit. So hopefully they know to do that. Or you can leave them a little note saying, hey, you don't put it together. I don't know. Star shaped card. Sidestep rocker card, which we have done cards similar to this. If you guys recall, um, it was like that, that one where you twist it. But this one's a little bit different. So sidestep rocker. Tiered pop-up card, which is very cute. Looks like a little stage or like exactly with like flowers. That'd be really cute. Um, fancy card storage box. So you can make a little storage box. Again, all this that you see, you are cutting that by hand. And that's that. Okay. So again, this one doesn't come with any more dies or anything like that. You're supposed to use the dies from the initial set, which actually I have sitting next to me for some reason. I was just like, why, does this, why is there a little set of dies next to me here? It's from that, and I guess it's to remind me to use them, because otherwise they'd be, like, over there put away. And, of course, now that I say that, I don't know, I don't see them. But they've been sitting next to me the last few times I've made videos. Um, let me take this out of the plastic. I'll be right back. And these are the actual templates. So this is the blue edition, um, and that's just what they're calling it. So when you see it, it's blue and... I don't know. Do you think, see any rhyme or reason here, like, as a, as a collection? I really don't. Um... You know, if it was like fun fold cards or whatever kind of thing, I don't know. Because we do have some other stuff. The next one, like I said, does have a few boxes. So I might let that one come in because I love a good box. And then I think I'm going to cancel it for sure. Or just go ahead and skip the other ones for now. And then I guess I can change my mind if I change my mind, but have it ready to go. And you guys can always do that on HSN in your auto ship manager just after you log in. Um, um, you know, you can go to your account, you can just drag down for auto ship manager. But if you're in your account, like where you see your orders on the left, it'll say, auto ship or something like manager you just click on that it'll show you all everything that's slated and you can skip them um, you can unskip up until obviously when it was due and you can just cancel right there too so they don't make you give them a reason or anything like that it's just you and you say cancel now that I'm looking at this and it has a lot of matte layers I'm like hmm I don't know if I'm gonna do this one but that's the trifold shutter shadow box card again we have an aperture if you want to cut that in or you can use these different apertures again you were doing this drawing it cutting it by hand curvy gatefold card there's the butterfly card which again if you have a large die just you know put some like this on the edge of your card or a folded piece of paper and run it through and missing the end and there you go um you can do the same kind of thing uh, half star card this is cute that's the one that had this several different layers and then it had the little boxes with like kind of pop-up area I guess camera shutter card secret message handbag which is very cute and very quick I think should we do this one maybe we should do this one today 
because um, the bendy foldy card is also another one that's pretty quick um, because this one has a lot of scoring and we're still doing cutting I think that'll be fun so let's think about this one and these are like the smaller ones and these larger guys over here again for that round card again you're cutting this circle by hand <laughs> hopefully you have a six inch uh, die is what I would do to be honest and then maybe still use the lines obviously for the folding and it's hard to see guys sorry um, tiered pop-up card that's the one that looks like it's like a little like flower stand and the fancy card storage box and there it is so okay let's do this guy and it says ooh, ooh, so scary I want to be careful with this especially where you only have like this little tab holding this down here you know you don't want to pull it too hard um, base and handle one sheet of eight and a half by eleven embellishments and tag one sheet eight and a half by eleven matte slash layer one sheet eight and a half by eleven um, I don't think you need a whole eight and a half by eleven for these things obviously if you're want to use that heart or you die cut something it does have a tag shape and it has the handle of course we're going to use that and then we have this guy so let me grab an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper for this cute part and then we'll go from there so this is actually a piece of a4 paper so it's not eight and a half by eleven it's like you know almost 12 inches by eight and a quarter but i looked at this and it works so i'm going to put this in it's just double-sided paper this is an older piece of crafts companion paper i have so hopefully it won't just uh, kind of want to, like, sort of when I score it, if it wants to break a little bit, I hope it doesn't do that. Now, I can definitely line this up in a place where I don't actually have to cut one of these lines, you know what I'm saying? Like, here, it'd be fun, it'd be better for, like, the main bag itself. I usually would line it up against the very edge, so then that's just one less thing that I have to cut. Which, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do it this way, and then we'll do our handbag handle down here, or on the side over here. Because um, that makes it just easier, guys. Just less lines to draw. The other thing, I'm going to be doing something different. I am going to tape this because I'm going to move it from here to the next place. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape here, and I put a piece of tape, sorry. Ooh. Um, I put it down this bottom corner. And this one I'll put here, and I'll show you why, because... I do not want to draw every single one of these fold lines and then have to erase it or for it to be visible on the inside because like how they're showing you you're going to do your scoring and you fold it in but you, you see there are no pencil marks right you don't want them on the outside you definitely don't want them on the inside if you are going to go ahead and draw them I would say do it lightly and erase them obviously um, but what I want to do is so what they want you to do is draw everything out and then you take it to your scoring board please tell me how you're going to line up these angles on your scoring board because even if it's like this you still have to know that you're doing it straight <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying like here I don't know if that's actually straight it could be just a little bit off to the side right I mean you you, you don't know <laughs> right so it's very difficult so what I'm gonna do is draw the lines that I need to cut and I'm going to use my uh, embossing or yeah like an embossing tool maybe the same one that they're showing you there because I think I have one right in front of me yet from this guy and I'm just going to draw them without actually drawing them maybe use this other side it depends on if it fits through here oh yeah it does fit so that's fine so I'm going to draw them I know you're not gonna be able to see them but I don't want to have to erase them afterwards so that's just me so and I'm also going to use this mat now these are just extra things you don't need this you can just push in like I did right now I can see that it's scored and that's fine but this is the back side um, of this tonic magnetic mat on the back side it has a very thin layer of foam that is very resistant this is also on the back of like my um close to my heart mat my mat that's like this the black cutting mat on the back side it has like a little rubber so you can stamp on it um it gives you that resistance i have a crafter's companion piece that's like purple foam from one of the other stamp things maybe something like that some kind of something kind of foamy obviously large enough to handle your project that will just make it easier for me to get score lines and then i pulled this out which kind of messed up these things i don't think i'll be doing that again but you can just fold it over or open your book up completely right because that's why it's those rings okay sorry about that so again these are just things like this is what I prefer you guys do whatever you like um, as always so I have a pencil here that came out with my uh, 
washi and people ask me all the time where I got the suspenser. I got it from Daiso. I have not seen them at Daiso Japan in a very long time. They used to be on their online store. I have not seen them. I haven't seen any of them that look like this or like the ones that look like my Melody or Sanrio and all that. Okay. One other thing I always say when you're doing your templates is always choose a line. So, you know, we have these lines, right? They have these openings. If your pencil is very thin and you go to make a line, maybe the next time it's a little bit higher up and maybe this time it's lower. I always try to stick to like the outer edge or the inner edge of the line and always do it the same, especially when you're doing your um, folds, just your folding lines. Just make sure you're doing them so the same. Now, this guy that I'm going to use is pretty thick. And so when I do it, it's just going to be the same because of the thickness of this. But just when you're drawing your lines, just make sure, like right now I'm going to draw this, but I'm going to stick to the outer edge, right? And here I put it on the very outside edge, so I don't have to cut that, but that's where I judged it from, this outer part, not this inner part. So just something to think about so that your project will be symmetrical or whatever it is at the end. So I'm sticking to this outer edge. Hopefully that makes sense. And just gonna bring it around again, drawing towards the outside edge. Sometimes those kind of things can get tricky because, like on the scoring, you're like, well, should I score up here or at the bottom? I'm always doing the outer further edge, so that's just how I do it. And then this one just goes to here again on this uh, topmost edge. I think that's the only drawing because we're gonna cut that, and, and now I don't have to cut these two because I put it right on the corner, right? This guy is what we're going to use next. And of course, I put my tool far away from me. Hold on. I was doing my little intro bit there and my uh, dryer went off. So I had to go and do that and I moved things aside. Okay, so that's that puffy stuff. Again, I'm just going to, since this guy's real thick, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to run it through and I'm just going to follow the lines that they have made for me. Uh, there is a little area where there's like a little plastic you can't get through, but I'm sure you can probably push it down in there and it'd be just fine. But I'm doing this systematically so I don't forget any of these <laughs> score lines. So I did all these guys. I haven't done any of these long ones uh, yet, but I guess I can. So from here, all right, maybe I did those. But either way, <laughs> I'm just going to follow it down. I think I did that one. And that one is going to be cut. This one's score cut, right? And so this one needs to be scored. So I'm just gonna go and literally put my score lines throughout this whole thing. And this is a matte layer. We don't need to score that unless you want it as part of the decoration, part of the decoration. So now I gotta go down here. And same thing, okay? So I'm just gonna finish these guys, doot, 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 all these lines. And I'll rewrite all the score lines. You can easily check, just lift this up. See what you got. Now, I see I have this little spot, and I'm not sure why it says 8.5 by 8.5. You can get pretty much everything on this one sheet, right? If you want this heart, and you want that tag, and you want the thing, it would all be on here. So I'm just going to do the tag. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but let's just go ahead and trace that guy. And we're going to cut that by hand. I don't really want the heart. And then, yeah, pretty much all my score lines are there, and I'll show you what that looks like. You can see them all there. And of course they stop in the middle because I didn't, um, you know, use this thing uh, in those spaces. But I bet you if I had pushed it, I probably could have. So I'm just going to take a moment and just kind of finish those lines just so that they connect. Okay. Um, and then our handle. Now, honestly, you can probably just measure this and not even <laughs> do anything that it's asking you there. Uh, so I would just say measuring again from the outer line to this other one here, it is, um, I would say five eighths at least. So it's just over half an inch, almost three quarters, but not quite. It's literally five eighths of an inch by five and seven eighths. So I'm probably just going to cut a strip that's five eighths by five and seven eighths off here, you know? So five eighths and then five and seven eighths long, just to not have to do that. And here we go. So um, I'm gonna finish off again my scoring lines, but for now, ooh, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. Let's use a guillotine. Actually, since I don't have my guillotine in front of me, I have this guy, let's use this guy. I hope this scissor is sharp. <laughs> it might not be. Ah, is that locked? 
unlocked. I know this thing locks and unlocks, and I don't use it often enough. There we go. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So I'm just trying to cut this one. And what's nice about this cutter is that it has a metal wire like line and it shows you literally where it's going to cut. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to cut that piece off. And the rest of it I'm going to do by hand. So just follow your lines and hopefully, you know, all goes well. <laughs> just to there. I'm going to cut this top piece off with the 5 eighths just so that um, I can move on from that. So half 5 eighths is about right there. And about here. Nope. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like this blade is kind of dull. So, and then I'm going to cut this down to, you know, 5 and 7 eighths inch, right? So I'll do that in a minute. And what happens with the rest of this is I can either just come down in here and eyeball where I'm at. Ah. So that piece. And this kind of curves around, so obviously whenever I fussy cut, I'm turning my paper with my left hand, my non-dominant hand, and I'm only applying pressure with my scissors with my other hand. So there's that. Too bad the tip was not really drawn there because they had a piece of plastic in the way. So we have that. And I'm just going to cut away this excess. And then I'm going to come around here and bring it down. I am moving my hand this time. There we go. Right into here. And hopefully that is right there. And then this guy straight across. And you can definitely use your guillotine, not your guillotine, sorry, your paper trimmer for that too if you want to line it up. And I'm just going to fussy cut this guy. So again, straight down here. Maybe straight up and curved a little bit. And whatever I don't get cut, I'm going to erase those pencil lines. So straight down here. If I use this, we'll see. I don't know, but I just wanted to get it cut just so you guys would see that. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to cut this one down and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our pieces and before I finish completely, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this back over here. That's our little strip. As you can see, I mean, it's basically right on there. A little short, a little short. That's okay. I'm just going to split the difference and score that score line there, that score line here. I will tell you what a bummer about this is that, see how the plastic ends? You can't go past those lines, right? Where it stops like here. So it's going to be important when you get here because you want it to go all the way to the very edge. Because if you start trying to fold this and you didn't complete your little score line, it's going to like maybe not look so nice there, right? Um, and then this guy, let's take a look at the instruction. Uh, basically, you're just mountain valley folding again it says it on here right so let's put this the same way let me take this sticky stuff off and i am not minding the time right now i need to um valley fold valley fold mountain fold you know all these things valley fold mean you're gonna push it away from you basically and mountain fold you want it to come up towards you so um we'll talk about that in just a minute i want to just erase my lines right now what i wanted to see is on this one this one doesn't really say to say here um okay so on these score lines you're folding them down it doesn't matter if you're using this you know my paper is the same on either side but basically it's going to go like this into the purse so these glue tabs need to be down here and I'm going to take a moment to erase my pencil lines. And I suppose if you do want to make this one into a tag, you need to pop a hole, right? So just take like a little punch. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm totally eyeballing that. It might be crooked. That's a little bit scary, huh? Eh, not too bad. But again, you have a tag there. And um, let me erase whatever I might have left on these very edges here. Right? Where I drew and I'll be right back. So again, they're basically telling you here to go ahead after you've drawn everything to do your, do your lines. It's going to be easy on these ones that are just long and you can kind of find a straight line to match up with. It's harder on these diagonal ones and there are plenty of them, right? So just keep that in mind. Fold and burnish all the score lines. Fold the bag piece with valley and mountain folds as shown on the template. Now, do you like having your score lines facing you when you score or away from you, right? 
it's just whatever your preference is. So I already have my score lines and I feel like I'd prefer if the lines were on the inside, especially for a project like this. So again, I'm gonna fold this one towards me and I am going to use a scoring tool. Again, right on those score lines that we created ourselves, right? Um, these guys are interesting. It does say valley fold, so, and what I mean, <laughs> away from you like when I fold this yes I'm bringing this up towards me but the the score line is going down right where these guys mountain fold it's gonna pop up towards me so I am just going to line that up as best I can taking my time guys okay that's one of them here's another one and again this is kind of intuition but at the same time you can read that it says valley fold or whatever right okay so we have that guy and then we have valley fold all across here, valley fold all across here, right? These two main ones, so let's do that. And then we'll worry about our diagonal lines in just a minute. There's that one. Valley fold again up towards me. The paper's coming up towards me, meaning the fold is pushing down. Now these are the fun ones. <laughs> these are all mountain fold, meaning from this corner to this here is gonna come up towards me. So again, I mean, we had to draw these ourselves, so it's a little tricky. Just trying to find the best angle to come at this, okay? And now I kind of got it folded and I can kind of give it a score. Ooh, does not look wonderful, but that's okay. All we're trying to do with these guys is get them folded inside. Same thing with this guy. This one, a little easier for whatever reason, so that's good. And now I'm doing this one in the air for some reason, but that just worked for me. We have these two, and both of them say mountain fold. So this one and this one, you see how it's like, so that means they both need to come in. I'm just gonna kind of force that one back, force this one, mountain. I'm trying to see how that makes sense. Okay, so that's it, right? Not completely folded like these guys, but just in. And then this guy, oh, I'll be back to leave. <laughs> I was like, oh, why is that ringing? Again, I kind of like to get a crisp fold if I could, okay? We have just one more set to do. Some of these are easier than others, and maybe I pushed harder when I made that line than on the other ones, you know? Again, this one too, and this one too. I'm just wondering why there's so many extra of these bits. Okay, so it kind of looks something like that not really what they're doing is these guys kind of come this way and these guys kind of go up that way very interesting okay i hope you see what i'm doing <laughs> these two are kind of closer to this area so they kind of tuck in these guys are just kind of zigzagging and then these last two are kind of close to the front and so when you fold it up it looks something like this now that is very cute why are there so many folds <laughs> like all these guys i feel like you should be able to cut some of that away right it's too much there's a lot of excess but it doesn't say anything about cutting anything so i'm not going to do that um very interesting okay so it's something like that and then this goes this way and then the little um what's it called uh handle at the top so something isn't nesting in here as well as I would like it to. That's what it is right there. So as you can see, these two really need to nestle right by each other. Same thing with that front. So when you close it up, it closes up a little nicer. This one's still sticking out further than I would like, but again, did it by hand. Okay, and look at that way that's not... I really, really want to burnish those a little bit better, which I'll probably take a moment to do later, right? But there you go. And then the thing, and then it says to put Velcro up in front here to hold it down. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to waste the Velcro on this right now, but I will finish it off with this handle. So I'm putting glue on the bottom side. And it goes there. And it's very important that actually, actually that that's that 5 eighths um, because it has to match up with the thickness that's here, right? Very interesting. I didn't even think about that. And over here. So I'm just going to hold those on. I will be right back. Okay, guys. So, I mean, that is the project. Is it cute? I think it's cute. I think it has a lot of, of paper here. I don't know how much things you can actually fit in there. Maybe a couple of, like, lint candies or, like, maybe a couple of Ghirardelli stacked up. Maybe a little pack of 
tea and a little chocolate, I don't know, shortbread, something, but it has to be pretty small because, um, I mean, I can give you a measurement for the base and then I gotta go. Uh, two and a half inches square, roughly. And then you have this little guy and then you would put like Velcro. I mean, it is very cute, it's very dainty. I mean, look how cute that is right from the front. And the side's a little funky, <laughs> not gonna lie. The point has to do with my folding, so maybe I have to fold it a little better. I don't know, I just wish there was less, were less folds in there. And there's probably a way to cut out some of the excess, you know what I'm saying? What you might not need, maybe glue together instead of, but you still wanna open it, so you have to think about that as you're making your cuts. Um, and then, you know, whoever receives it, opens it up and then the little treat is down in there. Uh, interesting. It looks very Jackie-O, that's pretty cute. Um, and then, you know, put a little ribbon, put your little tag, die cut, stickers, whatever else that you want to decorate with uh, would be really cute. But there's one project done, and, um, you know, what are you going to do? I'm going to glue that down in a way that it looks cute for pictures. I don't know that I'm going to put um, a Velcro. I think I'm just going to glue it. <laughs> Uh, just so we can get a nice picture but thanks for watching guys um like i said i'll link whatever might be available in the description box um how's it going with your template library let me know good bad whatever it is um, we all want to know or what you've been working on with it um and i'll link the spellbinders um spring clearance which is gonna be great oh i do want to mention i don't know if you guys noticed they have a glimmer workshop coming up and you can pick up a kit you know you can buy like a glimmer kit and then there's like an add-on one to that kit um i think i'm gonna pick one up myself today's uh, april like 19th i think it's in the middle of may so they're giving people a lot of time so you can get your order in you know so you can uh follow along with the workshop the workshop is free anyone can watch it but of course if you have the items to actually make the projects that's better right so um i'll pick my setup too and um, i'll link that in the description box um because like I said, the classes are free, but if you want the kit, you know, you want to pick those up and have them ready to go. Or just watch and learn about the Glimmer or those kinds of things. So I'll have more information about that in the description box. And just know that I am also picking up the kits. So um, I'll see you guys at the next one. <laughs> Bye now.